Dobro večer, dragi gledatelji. Rijetko kad imam prigodu na ovaj način, ako objasnit ću vam na što to mislim, ugostiti ovako eminentno gosta. Ovaj način to znači da je čovjek sjeo na vlastiti avion i došao u Hrvatsku samo zbog ove emisije, a moj gost je globalni emiratski poduzetnik Mohamed Alabar. Dobro večer, dobro došli. Hvala vam lijepo pone prije na toj gesti. Hvala što ste stigli u svim tim putovanjima koje ste zadnjih dana imali. Svaki dan ste u avionu vratiti se natrag u Hrvatsku samo zbog snimanja emisije. Pa da goste možda objasnimo taj itinerer. Gdje ste sve bili zadnjih dana i kako ste stigli u emisiju? First of all, it's such a pleasure to fly to Croatia. So it's not trouble at all. Uh, before this, uh, I came from uh, Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, uh, the resort town. Uh, so it was uh, one night there, one night in Athens. Uh, and before that, there was lunch in Tirana, and I was in Zagreb. I da sad se vratili. Hvala, dakle, to je bilo svog 3-4 dana. Hvala na tome. I odmah da kažem onima koji možda ne znaju, Evo, pokazat ćemo sliku, pa ćemo objasniti zorner slika, kažu skolastici, privodi vjeri bolje od riječi, i to tisuću riječi. Burš kalifa, to je toranj kalifa, svi poznajete. Ja ne znam nikoga, vjerojatno njedno djete na planeti Zemlji ne postoji, ja da ne znam za taj toranj. E, ovo je gospodin čija tvrtka izgradila taj toranj i ne samo to. Pa, moje će biti prvo pitanje upravo vezano za ovaj toranj. Vi ste se rodili u tom gradu, dakle u Dubaju. Kako netko ko se rodi na rubu toga grada, jednog dana kad se u njegovom središtu popne na najvišu zgradu na svijetu, na njezin vrh, gleda na taj svijet oko sebe i kako se osjeća? A u 15. ste još živjeli zaista na rubu grada i mislim da ste nam rekli da tada još do 15. niste imali ni struje. Yes, it's true. At that time, till the age of 15, there was no electricity or running water in, oh. in my mother's and my, my dad's house. Uh, but, you know, it's, I mean, God is kind. Uh, so, yeah, the, the day of the opening, it was probably, um, I was very scared. <laughs> and I was scared that would people really enjoy it? Because it's the beginning, right? Would really people appreciate it? Uh, is it going to be safe? Uh, would it bring hope? to my people that, wow, our city is a great city. Our city is one of the, you know, we are part of the world. Can we really maintain it well? Uh, can, we have, can we have safety to the maximum? Što vas je tjeralo da napravite tada najvišu zgradu na svijetu? Nekakav motiv utrke sa svima ostalima, urođena kompetitivnost? Well, first, uh, I think by nature we're just envious of other great cities, right? Yeah. And we love our cities. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, uh, His Highness and the city, I wanted to do a deal on the land. Uh, and uh, he said, you know, you're not going to touch this land unless, unless you build an amazing structure for the city. So um, we came up uh, with, uh, with, with, uh, with the building, but then it was, you know, 500 acres. So we built everything else around it. Da, svačam cijelu strukturu okolo. Naravno, to je bilo sad samo za predstavljanje, niste vi gradili samo Burš Kalifu, što što ćemo mi spominjati, ali prethodno krenimo onako kako se spada u novinarstvu od samog početka, jer ne mogu pretpostaviti da baš svi znaju tko ste vi. Recite nam nešto o svom životnom putu. Dakle, krenuli ste zaista od nula i došli ste na vrh svijeta. Krenuli ste iz ruba Dubaja, dakle, iskarekli ste kuće koje je tek dolazila voda i elektricitet, a postali ste globalni svjetski poduzetnik. Kako je takav vaš životni put? Hvala. 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 Da, to so niste my, spomenuo. So my, my mother is a hero. Um, you know, I, I really think that um, in life, um, you know, hard work pays off. So if you're there at the right time, but you work really hard, and I think if God is on your side as well, and you continue to work hard, and really try to uh, take a chance. You know, you have to take a chance. I know you all, we all work hard, but can we take a chance? And are we lucky enough that as we take a chance and take risks and work hard, 
will it click that we are at the right time, at the right place? Mm -hmm. And I really think that, that, that you, know, you have to take risk, you have to be brave, you have to have good friends around you, you have to have good people that, works, uh, that work with you. And, and I really believe that you know, God has to be kind to support you, and your mother and your father have to pray for you. Um, so I had, I had hopes. I didn't really make it until I was in my late 30s, to be honest with you. Dobro, to je ipak mlad čovjek, ali ovo je sjajno. Znate, mi malo znamo zapravo o svijetu iz kojeg dolazite. Mi znamo ovaj luksus, blještavilo, ali recimo ne znamo da je to zemlja šanse. Vi ste od dječaka rođenog obitelji sa 12-13 djece, koliko ste rekli, ipak uspjeli školovati sa u SAD-u, postati inženjer, jel tako, građevine, konstruktor i vratiti se, raditi u Singapuru, vratiti se u svoju domovinu i postati ovakav poduzetnik. Je li to moguće svima? Jeste li vi izuzetak ili je to tamo moguće svima ako radi i ima talenta? Well, I, I got so lucky that uh, my country got created the year I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get a scholarship uh, and go to the States. And my grades were average, so I, I was not really uh, the best thing in, in, in school. Uh, and the family is poor. But I think if you have enthusiasm in you and, and you, keep, you keep wanting to do, wanting to do and work at it, as I said, you know, I, I started trying hard from, I graduated at the age of 22. I started... I started at the age of 22 trying, trying to do something, and I made it after 15 years of trying. So I really believe that people who keep trying and take a chance, educate themselves, you know, keep at it. You just have to keep at it. And, and you know, these are the people who make it uh, in life is that they don't give up. They, you know, you know some of them, and, and they are all around the stage. Just don't give up. Kažete mi, kad vidimo sada ovu panoramu, to je tako grad budućnosti ili čak grad iz filmova, ne znam, Langa, Ridley Scotta, koga god hoćete, grad čudesnih građevina, arhitekture. Kako se razvijao taj grad u nazad 50 godina? On je nikao iz pjeska. Well, I think what's interesting about the city is that it's in a region where unfortunately, you know, Uh, be the BBCs of the world and the CNNs of the world will go bankrupt if it wasn't for all the bad news that come from our part of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got Iran, you've got Afghanistan, you've got Israelis and Arabs, you've got all the trouble. But, but Dubai really tells you and the Emirates tells you that, that good leadership can create an amazing environment even in a, in a region like our region. So the city competes with, with Shanghai and New York and London. It has 200 nationalities that live together there and prosper. It's safe, um, it's comfortable, everything works in the city. And it's all about leadership. So, so the, the, the Sheikh in, uh, in the Emirates and the policies they deploy um, on all business policies, bureaucracy, efficient bureaucracy, infrastructure, and evolution of laws as well uh, made it very special. Let's say, um, opet znamo naravno za naftu, ali nafta nije jedini izvod prosperiteta. Recite, na čemu se temelji vaš prosperitet? Well, Dubai don't, don't have oil. Znam, That's zato kažem, govorim o, tom, o toj regiji. Kad govorimo yeah. naravno o Emiratima, kad govorimo o ukupnom bliskom sure. istoku, no, sure. ljudi, ljudi obično pomisle ovdje na naftu, ali eto, mm. vi odmah kažete, mi namo naftu, mi, yeah. pa dobro, od ste toliko bogati? Well, it's, it's simple. You know, the, the Middle East, you either talk about 500 million people, if you include Iran together with us, and these 500 people, they don't have a business hub. While in Europe, all of you are about 320 million people, and you've got uh, Milan, you've got London, you've got, well, London, part, not part of the EU now, but you've got, uh, you know, uh, Munich, you've got Barcelona, you've got um, Rome, so you've got Vienna, so you have a lot of business centers while the middle east actually with 500 mil million people there is no business center so dubai was lucky enough to start early and be brave and become the business tourist hub for the region kad pogledamo sve ovo uh, znate ostale su od davnina uh, piramide pa danas imamo piramide hoće li ovo jednog dana sa izazvučem nafte 
takođe prekriti pustenja ili ste se vi pametno pobrinuli za budućnost? Ili kraće kazano, koja je perspektiva Emirata, Dubaja, cijelog tog kraja i kako vi tamo razmišljate o budućnosti vaše djeca? Vi imate djece, kako u budućnost vi njima gradite, što ćete im predati i ostaviti? The good news is that I think our children are so much smarter than, than ourselves. That's number one. Number, <laughs> well, I, I think they are getting better education, number one. Uh, they are getting, getting better health care. Mm -hmm. I think we are better parents than my parents who didn't read or write, at least in my part of the world. I I think, think, my mother, <laughs> no, my mother started reading about uh, six years ago. Somehow she learned to read again. Yeah, Odličan roditelj kad ste vi tako uspjeli. Well, between 13 kids and the cooking and the washing, I don't know how she did it, you know. So, so I would say that, uh, I would say that, uh, and technology, you know, the, the, the flow of information to our children's mind and everywhere in the world, I think that's really making a big change because the flow, I mean, these kids uh, are going to be so well equipped uh, to deal with the world. But I think in the region, if you look at the region, I believe that, that the region is also learning from its previous mistakes. I think there's evolution in governments, there's evolution in policies. I think the Middle East have gone through so much years of trouble. I think more and more, you know, people learning and uniting and, and putting good infrastructure in education and healthcare, hard in infrastructure, soft infrastructure. And, and you know, you can talk to me about democracy, you know, democracy, I believe social media made democracy wide open globally, so you cannot hide anymore. Recite nam nešto o tome, jer tome možda ne znamo previše. Koliko je u... Znate, mi mislimo ovdje na zapadu naprosto iz našeg nekakvog centrizma i mislimo da su svi oblici društvenog ponašanja i čovjekovog ponašanja univerzalni. Koliko je vama, recimo, demokracija važna koliko se ona prakticira, na koji način. Je li svojstva na duhu uopće prostičnog čovjeka u Emiratima ili gdje god se vi kretali i osjećali kući da razmišlja na takav način kakav recimo razmišlja netko u New Yorku, a vi ste čovjek koji ste i u New Yorku kući, pa komparirajte to. I think I think different people have different answers for it. But if you ask anyone in the world, so what is democracy? I think if my kids are safe, I think if we all have hope that tomorrow will be good, mm -hmm. I think if there's reasonable health care, there's reasonable education, I think there's reasonable good governance that that you know our court system and the police is 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 safe and fair and that we're optimistic about the future. I believe that is the greatest form of democracy. Wherever you find that, I think I think we'll be fine. Now, of course, it's not not everybody agree on the, on, on the same principles, uh, but that's why I say that social media making everything so transparent, you you can't hide. So, you know, even countries that don't have full fledged democracy, I think social media is is putting everything up. Uh, Vratim se još malo vašoj generaciji i generaciji djece. Hoćete li dakle vi njima nešto namriti i već planirate ostaviti kao perspektivu ili očekujete isključivo da se oni kao pametne generacije pobrnu sami sa sebe? Ili drugačije kazano, što se već danas radi da bez obzira na te prirodne prednosti od nafte, ne znam, ili ove financijske naravi, da vi i sutra, kroz 50 godina, budete jednako tako uspješni i bogati? I believe that it's really, it's the quality of the people that you have. So, even the organizations that I have, I don't think my kids should be fit only the, the people who should manage them. I think the best people should, mm -hmm. should manage these organizations to sustain them. But at the same time, I believe that you know, our kids should do what they love most. I really believe in that. I think if you do what you love most, you will excel. You live a happy life, but you will excel in what, we do, in what you do. Personally, for example, you know, people think I do real estate business. I really don't do real estate business. I'm in love with what I do. 
and I do it from my heart and I do it well. Sometimes we're supposed to make $10. I don't care even if we make $7, but let's do it right. Let's do it well. So for my kids personally, I want them to do something that's, uh, that they are comfortable with, that's sustainable. But what's more important is that I really think that we should carry our family names well into the future. Kad spominjete novac, a novac ljudi ne vole, ne vole spominjati pogotovo, mi nije možda pristane vam izravno pitati o novcu, ali koliko je vaš motiv bio da zaradite, a koliko je bio da budete kreativan, pa će onda novac doći sam po sebi? You will not believe if I tell you that when I started this company with 300,000 shareholders, My motives were not money. I was, I was so excited that they trust me. That was for me the world. Until today, till tomorrow. But if they trust you, you're going to do a good job. If you do a good job, money will come. And if you don't cut corner, you're transparent, you're honest, you try hard, you hire the best people because you want to keep that trust. And you will do it well. You do things well, you will never fail. That's, that's at least what I believe. Hrabrite me svakog odgovora. Moramo spomenuti jednu ružnu stranu. Nažalost, Bliski Istok se stalno iznova spominje po ratovima, terorizmu, nesrećama, eksplozijama, bombardmanima, raketmanima, uglavnom svom zlu svijeta. Recite mi, kakav je vaš odnos kad se pogleda ovo jedno prekrasno lice, kad se sluša vas kao jednog distingiranog gospodina i kad se onda setimo tih svih ružnih vijesti, eksplozija, eksploziva ljudi koji se samo žrtvuju na svetom putu, ne? Kakav je vaš odnos prema onima koji razaraju vas koji gradite? Well, I think wisdom is needed, you know. Big hearts and forgiveness is important. Um, so beside the whole business, I think if it's really these people, uh, negative people who are radical or other people, I think we should do our part, no matter how small it is. If it's the social housing programs that we do, it's something that's very close to my heart, by the way. I do social housing in Egypt and other car parts of the world. If it's the contribution to our society as well. I, I know that, that the, these negative uh, people Unfortunately, they, they will be there. But I think for us to uplift our societies and support other societies or other countries as well, yeah, for, for, for the stuff that they need, whatever that is, or at least the collaboration. For example, you know, when, when, when we have some of these radical Islamists mm -hmm. um, are, are there, honestly, some of the, some of the neighborhoods in other countries where some of them are there. You know, we, we want to show the good side. We build infrastructure, we build homes, we build schools. We prove to them that we mean well and we want society and we have to uplift that, uh, that society. Uh, so, but one thing that we should, we should not give up, we should not give up progress, we should not give up that we need to move forward because it will change and, and the wrong can never stay wrong. And we are on the right and we have to uplift our societies. That's, that's really our, our responsibility. Recite mi sada, ono što vjerojatno Hrvata najviše zanima, što vas je i ko je dobro nanjelo i dovelo u Hrvatsku? Believe it or not, you know, I, I live my life like a child. You know, I love everything. Uh, so, um, I think about 12 years ago, I was calling a friend. I said, you know, so much talk in the world about nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. Can somebody take me to a nuclear reactor? I mean, we are in the desert, no? I mean, we are from the Middle East. We have no nuclear, nuclear reactor. I said, there's so much about North Korea nuclear reactor. I don't know, trouble in I Iraq and Iran, nuclear, nuclear powers and nuclear reactors and nuclear... Uh, he said, I don't know anybody. And then they called me and they said, oh, we know somebody. Uh, in Croatia. He's a scientist. You should go and he will take you to one. I said, of course, I was in Los Angeles, I remember. And then I said, fine, where, where is this Croatia? They said, oh, you know, just fly to Split. So I, I came to Split, it was at night, and in the morning, I opened the curtain of my hotel, and it was the shock of my life. The beauty, 
of what I've seen. And, you know, I, I, my eyes are really, get, you know, I'm, I have emotional eyes. And then they took me in the afternoon to a little port, little port village. Um, old, or, you know, I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't focus. The beauty overtaken me. I was looking at the stone and the water, the boats, the fish. You know, I almost lost, <laughs> lost my mind. Uh, that was the beginning of my love. And that was about 12 years ago. I kako ste onda kasnije nastavili dolaziti? Jeste li dolazili isključivo zbog tih naših prirodnih ljepota? Evo, možemo ih i pogledati. Ili vam je palo na pamet da ovdje nešto i počnete raditi? Well, uh, I was talking to somebody very, very senior mm -hmm. in, 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 in my country. And uh, I asked them, I said, what is the most beautiful place for you? And he's a very, very educated gentleman. And he said, coastline of Croatia. So, well, I've been there and I agree. And that started me the search. So, um, you know, I've been searching for five, five, six years. So that's why a lot of times, you know, do we have the endurance to continue our our mission and vision and do we have to we have to stay stay you know it doesn't happen the first month so you have to keep at it you have to keep at it and opportunity came što ste što ste to naučili tijekom tih ja znam ponešto o vama i znam da brzo donosite odluke ne volite dugo ovaj sastančiti ne volite gubiti vrijeme i jednostavno dosta brzo živite i dosta brzo odlučujete Uh, recite mi, ovdje kažete da ste šest godina istraživali, to znači da ste nas dobro proučili. Uh, da pitanju jednom, kako, sad pustimo obalu i to, kakvi smo mi ljudi, kakav je dojam o Hrvatima, jesmo li radišni, jesmo li ljeni, imamo li perspektive ili ne? I što bi bilo najbolje po vama da mi radimo pa da i mi imamo <laughs> osim ovakovih... Vidite, mi smo imali pametne pretke pa su sagradili ovako prekrasne građevine i tako dalje. Ja bih volio da imamo i sadašnju stakovu pa da ne moramo imati baš Burč Halifu, ali ni visoke nebodere, ali da ipak i mi ostajemo nešto u budućim generacijama što će biti prekrasno. Gdje je naša perspektiva po vašem tom istraživanju? Well, first of all, about fast decisions, mm -hmm. uh, yes, you are right. And we don't want to talk about my mistakes because I made mistakes uh, and I paid the price for them uh, and we learn. But, you know, we can't do everything right. I mean, that's that's fact of life. I hope we learn from them. I watch it. I have a very super tall son. Uh, Jordan, Michael Jordan. Da on dao tako toliko puno koševa, jer je dao, ima puno promašaja. Da on to jes hoće kazati. Naravno, da ste puno toga promašili i zato ste puno i uspjeli. He's a wise man. Da. He's a wise man. I would say that, you know, really the people in Croatia and in the region, you know, so warm, so kind, so welcoming. And I come from such society. And that really touches my heart, to be honest with you. When it comes to uh, development, you know what I like about th this part of the world? Is that every, every, everybody respect um, the, um, the church uh, and the church height. <coughs> so uh, the idea of making sure that actually the cathedral is the landmark in a city, I think it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I really think that Croatia and, and this region should really keep that respect. Uh, so whatever we build, you know, we have to look like we are in Croatia, we should like, look like Croatian. You know, you are in New York, you look like New York. So, so Croatia cannot look like Dubai. And New York cannot look like Croatia, but Croatia should like, like, look like Croatia. And I really think that should be the, uh, the planning. Of course, with modernity, with technology, with, with putting great infrastructure, with technology, gardens, parks, uh, you know, sustainability issues, it um, to will be, to be beautifully uh, done. Vi ste se naravno zainteresirali tijekom tog istraživanja za naš turizam. Sad ste i kupili hotele. Koji oblik, koju vrst turizma vi ne samo mislite razvijeti, nego za koju vrst turizma vi imate apsolutno iskustvo 
u tome, znadete taj posao. Što mislite, dakle, da bi trebao biti hrvatski turizam? Koje kvalitete, koje kategorije, kome bi se on trebao obraćati? Well, first, let's just look where we are. You know, we are driving, we are driving distance from, what, over 120 million people. Yeah, they have reasonably good level of income. Uh, 1,700 uh, amazing coastline. Um, it's, it's, it's very easy. I think uh, tourism uh, just at the beginning, in my humble views. Mm -hmm. But our duty is to improve the infrastructure. Our duty is that we work with government that, you know, we, we improve efficiency and bureaucracy. And I think, you know, as hotel owners, our duty to really upgrade our, our hotels, to do great marketing, uh, great services, extend the, the, uh, the months of operation of our hotels by being creative, providing more services. Uh, and we in the hotel industry, we know how to do this best. We really don't need uh, a lot of help. So upgrading. Well, uh, I am in, uh, of course, I'm in Dubai, uh, I'm in uh, Egypt, uh, I'm in Jordan, uh, I'm in Morocco. Uh, I started a project in Athens and then I uh, sold, uh, sold out. Because I've done uh, a lot of work in Indonesia as well in the past. Um, but in the, in, in the Middle East, uh, I'm almost uh, in Oman. Oman is a beautiful country. Uh, so I'm in uh, the country of, uh, of Oman on the, uh, on the Indian Ocean. Uh, I do work uh, there. Znam za Oman, imam upravo omanski parfem na sebi, to sam stavio zbog vas koji dolazite iz tih krajeva. O, da. You have good taste. Hvala lijepo. I Oman ima osjajane parfeme. Dakle, vi mislite da trebamo od infrastrukture pa do poboljšanja naših usluga i produžetka sezone za početak? A ne. And I mean infrastructure. I really don't mean roads and airports. No, I mean so the hotels themselves. No. We need to invest in hotels. We need to upgrade. I don't mean let's go all five stars. No, I'm just saying let's just enhance it. Even if we keep it at four star or three star or five star. But, but let's enhance it and let's be creative in what we do. Because the hotels of yesterday, they are not the hotels of, of today. And they are not going to be like that uh, day after tomorrow. So we need innovation and it's very easy to do. Koliko bi ova pandemija i ove okolnosti mogla omesti vaše poslovne planove u Hrvatskoj? U što turizmu? I think the pandemic is disturbing all of our business plans everywhere, to be honest with you. Um, I am optimistic that um, 2020, uh, 2022 will be a much better season uh, for all of us. But then again, what are we talking about? Are we serious investors for the long term or are we just here for three years and want to sell our business? We are going for the long term. So, you know, if this year is, you know, not doing well, but, you know, we're looking at tomorrow, day after, and we'll continue to invest because we know that tomorrow is going to be, is going to be good as long as we do it well. Kažite mi sad nešto za nas u Hrvatskoj prilično važno. Vi ste investitor u Hrvatskoj. Kako je tekao te proces? U redu, to je bila prodaja nečeg privatnog, nakon koje je privatan kupac, dakle, ali ipak, kakva vaša impresija i koje iskustva sa našom birokracijom, administracijom i svima ostalo? Ljudi obično kada se govori o investicijama u Hrvatskoj govore o porezima i o prevelikoj birokratiziranosti. Hmm. The truth is a bureaucracy everywhere. I operate in 14 countries. It's everywhere. It differs from one country to the other. But, but I'm a guest. If I don't like this bureaucracy, why, should, why am I here? I should, you know, I should go back. So I think it's, I think it's reasonable. Uh, but I think it's our duty that we keep improving. It's our duty that we keep improving. If it's the, I'm talking about the, the bureaucratic process. It, with technology nowadays, it can improve so much. But then the bureaucracy is existing everywhere. And every country is trying to, to, to work on it, to improve it. Uh, but I was in, in the purchase, it was very simple. I, I, there was no issues for me. Da, primijetio sam to u jednom vašem intervju da ste kazali da i u Indiji, u Siriji i ovdje svugdje imate problema s birokracijom ovako ih ili onako i da Hrvatska nije po tome ništa posebno. No, I mean, you know, I, I do operate in, in other countries. It's, it's very tough, uh, to be honest with you. But, but then again, 
I mean, that's how they do business in that country. I have to respect that. Uh, you know, and I'm a guest there. And it's working. But it's difficult. Now we go to something that was bad. Loša PR epizod, dajmo to tako kazati, jer nije posao ni započeo. To je takozvani projekt Zagrebački Manhattan. Sad ću vam kazati nešto što ću vas prenaraziti. Taj projekt su povezivali sa... I don't know why they call it Manhattan, because... Zato što su očekivali da kad dolazite iz Dubaja, da će na Valda na prostoru hipodroma niknuti jedno 20 ovako ih najboljara. I should really bring it... I should bring you a picture of the design because everything was designed Zagreb style, Zagreb level. You know, I, I, not here. I hate tall buildings here. Znate Ani. zašto? Sad ću evo, da, da vam nešto kažem o našem mentalitetu. Uh, mi smo ma, uh, malo mjesto, pa imamo malo mišćanski, rekli bi, dalmatinci mentalitet, pa ako hoćemo biti, ako ne beći Budimpešta, ono barem po nečemu veliki, pa onda Beograd mora imati Beograd na vodi, nebo da je Zagreb mora imati vjerojatno Burš Kalifu ili Popov Toranj ovdje nastat mm. ovog ipodroma. Yeah, yeah. Nešto yeah. jako veliko. Mm. Ali uh, nećemo se više žaliti, niti stalno uh, govoriti ružno o našem mentalitetu, nego da vam kažem nešto o tom projektu. Vi mislite da je to predlog bivšeg gradonačenka Bandića. Ja ću vam kazati što je zapravo predlog. Vidite, preko je hipodrom, a prije hipodroma ovo se zove Zagrebački velosajam. E vidite, prije 20 godina ja sam sjedio sa jedinim autorom dva urbanistička plana, gospodinem Dakićem, i tada na početku karijere gradonačenikom Bandićem na jednom ručku i rekao sam mu kako sam ja i povisjećar umjetnosti Čujte, gradonačelniče, zašto vi ne bi od ovog velesajma koji više ničem ne služi napravili downtown? Dakle, ne velike nebodere, nego poslovno središte. Čime bi se iz starog dijela grada preko Save probacio poslovni centar? Tu bi niknuli onda ovog tercijalni sadržaj restorani, onda bi neko se zamačao, pa bi tri kemijske čestionice. Dakle, grad bi živnuo. Što mislite o toj ideji da se ovako oplemeni donji grad i da se od donje grada napre poslovni centar? Well, I think nowadays the way they do the business centers, they really, they combine them. They like to do work and live. Because the business centers, they realize, like the city of London, is that after 7 o'clock it's totally dead. So now they combine working and and living. So you do your hotels, you do your residential, you do the park, you do the school, you do the offices. So it becomes alive day and night. So I think this is ideal location. So it's really the new center. Kupili ste kuću u Zagrebu. Prema tome vi ovdje kanite provoditi i neko vrijeme, dakle biti naš sugrađan. Šretili ste Zagrebom. Koje su vaše prve impresije? Sad vratit ćemo se na potres, ali inače u Zagrebu. Što valja? Što je to dobroga? A što ne valja? Sviđa li vam se promet, sviđa li vam se broj restorana, sviđa li vam se živost noću, jesmo li mi premrtav grad noću, sad na stranu pandemije, ali kako mi Zagreb izgleda u tom smislu? I like this, I like the architecture and the size of Zagreb. Because, you know, sometimes big cities, you know, you lose the spirit when it comes to big cities. So I like, I like the size and I like the architecture uh, in, in the city. And that's why I bought the house. And I, it took me one year to renovate also. <laughs> But I'm there, I'm finished. Yeah. Uh, recite mi, uh, kada biste vi, kojim slučajem, uh, dobili prigodu urbanistički mijenjati Evo Zagreb ili uh, nešto uh, od svog iskustva prenijeti, što biste... Vidim da ste jako pristan čovjek, ali budite malo otvrni. Što biste nam savjetovali? Što da učinimo? Mi sad imamo novog gradonačelnika, možda će mu neki ovakav savjet svjetskog čovjeka koji je sagradio tako impozantne građevine pomoći. I don't know if I'm fit to do that, but to be honest with you, just keep Zagreb as Zagreb. Don't change Zagreb. But can we really renew Zagreb, but still respect it? To je lijepo rečeno. Which means that, really, which means that, you know, as I said, give it love, you know, you know, upkeep and repair the old buildings, improve the pavements, okay, you know, enhance, I think the parks are really beautifully done, but, you know, enhance the public market, make the... Evo sad ću vam kao biznismenu dati jedan zadatak. 
Ja ne živim samo ovdje, kad nije korona, živim i u Berlinu i Berlin ima fenomenalne fasade i ne samo fasade, nego hofove. Dakle, iznutra, izvana je savršeno to sve uređeno, izbigecano, kako bi mi ovdje rekli, dakle, izgleda prekrasno. Ali tamo ljudi plaću velike, dakle, te pričuve, kako mi kažemo i nazivamo to. I to se svaki 4, 5, 6 godina obnavlja i zato to sve skupa izgleda tako uredno. Ljudi i nemaju, naravno, za te fasade. Zagreb je prekrasan. On nije grad trokatni kao Beć, tako dalje, ovog ili četvrokatni, ali dvije do tri te, osim prizadnje etaže, zaista ga čini jednim sjajnim midi, mitle, evropskim gradom. Kako biste vi isfinancirali, recimo, obnovu fasada i uređenje do njega grada? Gdje da se tu nađe novac, kako da se napravi ta obnova? Well, I'm not sure about uh, you know, the, the uh, income of the city, but I, if, if it's over, let's assume this will be done over, I don't know, 10 years or so, because it will take time. I would really promote that building owners to say, listen, if you are planning to renovate, mm -hmm. uh, this is, I'll give you this period of time. If you renovate within this period of time, you know, you put in 50, I'll put in 50. Because I think, you know, the, the enhancement in, uh, when you enhance the value of the real estate, when you enhance the value of retail in that building, at the end of the day, it will come to you in your VAT. Uh, it will come to you back into your tourism. And there are many, many cities who've, who have done that. So I will support you to renovate. But I know over seven, eight, nine, ten years, I'm going to get it back because the city will be more beautiful, more tourists will come, more jobs will be created, more retail will be selling, more VAT income. This Split is my Splitu se to dogodilo. Splitu se to dogodilo zadnjih, upravo što opisujete zadnjih godina. Da je živno, da je procao, tako. Kako biste obnavljali, u tome imate puno iskustva, kako biste obnavljali, recimo, ovaj grad nakon potresa? Čak ste o tome nešto i govorili u hrvatskoj javnosti. Well, it's a tough job because, first of all, it's a massive size and I think Corona made it difficult for the authorities, but they've done an amazing job. I think you have great contractors in, uh, in the city. Uh, and I read, I don't know, I read that, you know, labor shortage is an issue. Uh, and I heard also that the government have made it easier for companies to import labor uh, to get the job uh, done. I mean, you know, but, but it's a great opportunity also that really we modernize the infrastructure. We, we, you know, we take care of the environment, whatever technology we need and all these new, uh, you know, sustainable buildings and the rest of it. But also it's such a difficult job because I, I was thinking that all the rubbish that's left over from these buildings, you know, how would the local city deal with it? But I would still go back and say that, you know, you have a decent contractor in, in town. If I were to divide the job by bringing outside, outside project managers and divide the city and use outside, um, I'm talking about local project managers with local contractors, support them with labor, uh, improve bureaucracy a little bit, but it's a complex job, it's going to take time to get it done. Kažite mi što sve za sada, kako sad stvari stoje, kanite u Hrvatskoj ulagati? Ili je turizam za sad početak, pa ćete vidjeti? When I look at, I mean, I looked at Zagreb doing the fair site, Uh, because I believe Zagreb City tourism will, will expand, uh, business will expand. So doing a sizable project like that is something that I was interested in. I'm still interested in. But I think with the housing uh, situation after the, after the earthquake, I think it's critical that few projects uh, get built. So my interest is that if there's something sizable in Zagreb or something on the coast, I'm still interested. Recite mi, kad ovako razgovaramo, Naravno, vi niste čovjek koji bi sad kao putnik namjernik samo uživao u Hrvatskoj, pa ja iznosi svoje impresije, nego ste imali kontakt eto sa gradonačelnikom, a imali ste i sa vladom. Kako su tekli ti razgovori i koja je vaša impresija? Znam da ste sa gospodinom Zdravkom Marićem razgovarali da imate najbolje moguće mišljenje o njemu. Zašto? Yes, yes. Well, I met him a few times, uh, officially, and then I met him unofficially. Uh, uh, you're very lucky to have somebody like uh, your Minister of Finance who represent the country very, very well. Uh, and I have so much hope uh, when you have leaders like that uh, in your country. Uh, and I was uh, asking for support that I'm looking for projects to, to bid for and possibly uh, work on. 
Um, uh, yes, the, I know the mayor um, uh, very well, uh, late mayor, God bless his soul. Um, and he was a friend, but we don't speak English, so we are not, you know, when you don't speak English, you don't get close. But he was enth enthusiastic about the, the project, but that's behind us now. Mislitele da bi se mogao obnoviti taj projekt? I hope so. I really, I'm, I'm quite keen, I'm quite interested. Uh, that can, that hoćete, li, hoćete li našeg novog gradonačelnika kontaktirati Tomaševića i hoćete li mu se najaviti na razgovor pa predložiti moguće razvoj tog projekta ili barem da ga uzme u obzir ovaj kao uh, eto, vaš predlog? Uh, I am planning, uh, but I want to give him a few weeks for him to settle and naravno, naravno, understand what is going on. And, and uh, it's important to at least explain to him what I have in mind, because I, you know, maybe people misunderstood. What I have in mind is, is through Zagreb. That's what we should do. Znate što, mi mislimo vrlo često onako mazohistički o sebi, da je sve kod nas najgore. Nismo baš, znate, mi smo i znamo biti vesel narod i suprotno mišljenju o Hrvatima i duhoviti. Sjajan smo mi narod, samo imamo tu neku slavensku možda crtu najiskrenih samobičevanja. Volimo izdražiti mane i gdje ih nema. Pa tako, obično mislimo, ja, ovdje niko neće doći investirati, mi smo isključivi ljudi, ne, ne, ne prihvaćamo strance, napravimo uvijek kafkijansku birokraciju, da smo već govorili da čovjeka odbijemo. Recite vi meni, kad razgovarate s svojim prijateljima diljem svijeta, kakvu reputaciju kao zemlja za investicije ima Hrvatska i što bi trebalo učiniti da, da bude poželjnija investitorima? First of all, I think you are too hard on yourself. That's really my humble, Slažem se. My humble, my humble views. Um, no, I, th I think the image of uh, Croatia is still an um, image, <laughs> image of beauty, image of progress. People read the newspaper that, you know, it's one of the greatest economies in the region, especially recently you know, after, the, after the COVID and how the uh, country was, was managed. Uh, so people salute that. Uh, and I think the, the impression is good. Uh, the thing that I really miss the most is that I used to see uh, Croatia advertising on CNN a lot. I don't see it anymore. Uh -huh. uh, but I think, it's a, I think it's a positive image. Ono što također je bitno za vas kazati, vi se niste zaustavili samo na granicama Hrvatske, nego ste rekli ste bili ste u Tirani, u Beogradu gradite. Kako vidite cijeli ovaj prostor? koji je, eto, ja ne volim taj pojam, ali nazivaju regijom, ne volim ga ne zato što ne podsjeća na Jugoslaviju, nego mislim da je licemjeran, onda radi, nek se kaže, eks Jugoslavija, a ne ovako na malo vrata regije. Ali to sad nije za vas važno, to je za nas ovdešnje. No kako vidite budućnost kad dođete u Tiranu? Mi imamo i dalje nekakvu krivu predstavu da je Tirana, eto, tako da je razvijena, tako dalje, ali tamo se puno gradi, u Prištini se grade ceste, autoputevi, što mislite o ovom dijelu svijeta koji se zove eto tako Balkan u jednom drugom smislu na samom geografskom? Anyway, don't worry about what terms we use because English is my second language. English is second language, so it's okay. You know, we don't have to worry about that, but when we say a region. Um, well, the whole area is, is interesting because it, it's still behind uh, West, West Europe when it comes to development. Uh, So, you know, I mean, the, 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 the change that have taken place in, uh, in Belgrade uh, as well was really a tremendous uh, achievement uh, for all of us, for us and the government uh, in Belgrade. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at Tirana, uh, you know, I, I visit, uh, I look at uh, the level of development compared to other cities. I see the leadership so keen to do, I get really very emotional. And I say, you know what, they're so keen to look after their country. And I say, you know, I'm going to do it. I'll help these guys. I, truly, if you speak to them, they will tell you that Muhammad is very emotional. He knows that we want to progress in, in, in our uh, cities and he wants to come and contribute. And again, I'll go back and say, do it well. You do it well from your heart, you will make money. Don't cut corners. Don't think of that. I'll make, I'm going to come and maximize that. You will fail because you lose the purpose. So I think this, re this region as a whole, if I can say the word, I think it's in need of, of infrastructure and development. Uh, and, and 
and, and I really think it's, I think it's, it's an amazing opportunity for, for investors. Sad se vratimo opet malo vama. A, jednim pitanjem koje ću vam omogućiti onda da sad progovorimo o ovim industrijama, poput IT industrije i sličnima. Kako to da ste istrčali u e, ovoj sferi elektroničke trgovine na e, teren Bezosu? <laughs> Vidim da se se počne smijet. Jer znam da je to, sami ste kazali, najriskantniji vaš poslovni potez. E, zašto ste se uopće eto upustili to konkurenciju Well yeah that's the biggest risk I've taken because I started when I was 58 I'm 62 now so in my age I'm not a technology geek you know I'm not 25 years old but I've learned from my from my son because these young guys and my worry was that I really worried about 400 million people in the Arab region and Facebook Google and Amazon come and they're already controlling our world, I mean, that's, that's the real control nowadays, you know? Facebook and Google control, they are the occupiers, they are the, they are the new power to occupy. And on, on commerce, I really worried that small businesses are going to die in my region because how the Amazon's e-commerce of the world, they just come in, they do business with you, they become big and you, and, and you, and you disappear. So I, I went on, I took big risk and I'm so happy that uh, We are doing very well against uh, Amazon. I have great people working for me. Tu smo na dva minuta do kraja emisije i znate, žalio bi cijeli život da vas ovo ne pitam. Ba, vjerojatno će mnogi naše gledati za Kako to izgleda? Probuditi se ovako uspješan, šarvantan, bogat, moram kazati tu riječ, i sutra ujutro imati kad se probudiš ili danas ujutro kad se probudiš takav, još nekakav poslovni izazov. Što vas pokrenu uopće iz kreveta sa svim novcima svijeta da i dalje kreirate? Well, I think um, when I get up in the morning, um, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful that I am able to do what I do in my life. I think it's a gift from God uh, that He gave me the chance to wake up in the morning and still do what I do. And I wake up also scared. I wake up scared that would I let, am I going to let people down? People who trust me, my uh -huh. staff, you know, my customers. And can, are we going to make a mistake that we can apologize to people about? I, I wake up in the morning scared, am I still going to have the best people working with me? I wake up in the morning also worried, my people, are they working hard? Because you know, when you, when you, when, when, if you're grateful that you've got so much, you really have to take care of it. And you take care of it by working hard day and night. Otherwise, it, you don't sustain. Um, so I would say I wake up grateful for what God has given and I try to take care of it and I try to make small mistakes, not big mistakes. A ja sam zahvalan vama što ste evo podijelili ovih 50-ak minuta sa nama. Hvala vam lijepo, gospodin Alabar, što ste bili naš gost ovdje u Hrvatskoj na Hrvatskoj radio televiziji. Dođite nam naravno i opet, pratit ćemo vašu karijeru i u ovoj zemlji. Nadam se da ćete oplemenuti, a da ćete se kao građan grada Zagreba dobro osjećati. Dobro nam došli. I thank you so much and it's such an honor for me to, to be with you and your station and your program today. Thank hvala you so lijepo. much. Hvala vam lijepo. meni. Dragi gledatelji, hvala lijepo što ste bili sa nama. Gledajte nas naravno i sljedeći puta. Do tada, doviđenja.